everybody. So good morning, good evening for our speaker joining us today. My name is Jesse and I am your virtual adventure guide here with Exploring by the Seat of Your Pants. Welcome in in our second big week of broadcast. I know we've got a lot of new students joining us today and so if you are new to what we do, we are all about bringing conservation, adventure and science into classrooms around the world. Last year we did over 500 broadcasts and this year we're well on track to do the same. But every single year there is an event early on in September, early on as we sort of shake the jitters off of summer that is one of my very favorite programs to take part in and that is World Rhino Day which you guys are lucky enough to be here with us on today as we kick off a series of three incredible broadcasts with conservationists, amazing speakers, and some of the cool places around the globe. Now, specifically today, we are diving in with the International Rhino Foundation. So this is the leading organization on planet Earth for protecting these incredible, incredible creatures. I don't know how many of you have had the chance to see a rhino in a zoo or ideally in the wild, but uh, I have, and it's really one of the most incredible animal interactions I've ever had. They're just such majestic, incredible creatures. And today, specifically, we are going to dive in with a really unknown one for a lot of our students. A lot of you will be familiar with our African rhinos. Well, today, we are kicking off in Indonesia with Rudy Putra, who is a, a hero of conservation. This is a person who spent his entire life uh, dedicated to working with communities to save wild species, save wild habitats, in one of the most biodiverse and amazing places on this planet, Sumatra in Indonesia. And so... Without further ado, I'm going to turn it over to Rudy Putra joining us today uh, to dive in with a little bit about his work and the work of the International Rhino Foundation to save the Sumatran rhinoceros. So Rudy, thank you so much for being with us today and uh, take us away. Unmute your mic and you're good to go. <laughs> Hello everyone. So my name is Rudy Putra. I'm working for the Sumatran rhino in 22 years. So... This is the picture of the Sumatran rhino in the wild. This is not in the zoo, but in the forest of the Sumatra. Um, so this is another picture of the Sumatran rhino, really nice of the animal because they live solitary, not in the a group, but they only in single individual in one area. So they only meet when uh, they will breeding season or mother and calf. There is no indication, there is no chance to them to in one location together. So that's why we have to very carefully to maintain the Sumatran rhino in the wild. So this is the, uh, we call the area, the most important area in the world is Leucel ecosystem located in the Sumatra Island in Indonesia. And uh, this is quite far from the US or Europe, uh, but this is really important area. So we are close to the Malaysia and uh, in the Sumatra Island, we call it Sumatra Island in here. And this is only around the one hour flight to Singapore or two hour flight one hour flight to Kuala Lumpur, but two hour flight from the uh, Leuser to the Jakarta, the capital of Indonesia. So this is Leuser ecosystem consists of the national park, protected forest, and then the production forest and local communities land. Uh, host laws are important because this is the lowland forest important for the wildlife and beautiful forest left in the world. So you can see this picture is really beautiful forest left in Leuser. This is dominantly, it's 80% of the Leuser still beautiful forest like this. So like this, this is picture also beautiful. And so that's why we need to protect this uh, forest and the animal, especially for the Sumatran rhino. We developed the team for the protection. We call it wildlife protection team. So, this is the NGOs working together, led by the Indonesian government team, to protect the uh, the leucer and also the especially for the rhino in the wild. So, this is our team. This is mixed between government and uh, our team, uh, Leuser Conservation Forum and they have to cross the river. Sometimes it's dangerous, but we are happy because we can um, 
swimming in the river or fishing in the river or uh, just trekking. This is like uh, our job, our work, uh, like a hobby. So we can trekking everywhere in Lewisha. This is really beautiful area in the world. So that's, so that's why we, we, from our team, our work, we can save the Sumatran rhino in the Leuser ecosystem. So there is a small population left in the world, only 80 individual left in the world. But in Leuser, they are still breeding well in the wild. And um, indication of the, with the new baby or the new individual um, in the part of the Leuser. But this is not enough because only 80 individual left in the world. We need the many, many babies um, born in the captivity. So this is one of the inspiring photo who were inspiring me because uh, we can see this is rhino can breeding in the facilities of the breeding center. And several individuals in Leuser, there is no indication of the breeding. So that's why we need this model will implement in Leuser. So that's why in the uh, Indonesian government program will capture some isolated rhino in the Leuser and put them in the breeding center. We still build the construction of the facilities. This is the third facilities in Indonesia. One in Waikambas National Park, very success uh, to make it to, to, to organize the facilities for the breeding center and this is supported by the International Rhino Foundation and three babies are born in this facility so we need this model will implement in Leuser so we're working with the government and also with the private sectors and the donors to build the facilities in the Leuser and this is the model for the facilities the design for the facilities we will put the one rhino in the one paddock in the, in this area. So this is total five rhino in here, and they will breeding in the center of area to make uh, uh, because they cannot we cannot mix, mix uh, between male and female. And we hope this rhino will burn in the Leuser ecosystem in the facilities of rhino and in the future we will we will um, we will release them back to the forest to the wild to make the the new population of the subatron rhino and we optimist we will success and we will have the good population of the subatron rhino and we optimist in next many years maybe 100 years or less or more we will have the 1,000 or 2,000 of the baby uh, Sumatran rhino born in the, in the Leuser or Indonesia, and we will save the Sumatran rhino from the extinction. So we still have a hope, a big hope, and we optimist because we're working together. When we're working together, we have a dream, and then we, in, we will implement our dream to make this uh, happen. Uh, in the conservation of the Sumatran rhino. So rhino needs your help, need our help together. And of course, I'm optimist. We will save the rhino. Thank you. Thank you, Ruby. And you have good reason to be such an optimist because you're leading the charge. You've had the chance to see this for over 20 years now uh, take place and, and sort of come to fruition. You've been able to work with communities to sort of change people's understanding and habits around these rhinos in these habitats. You've helped protect, uh, stop people from poaching rhinos, which we'll, we'll get to in a little bit about some of the threats that rhinos face. And so again, I really want to stress for our classes today, it's such a rare opportunity to have someone who's a real leader locally and globally in, in conservation. So I, I'm thrilled that you've helped us kick off World Rhino Day today, Rudy. Uh, you, you were so uh, effusive in your praise about uh, rhinos being born at the center. And so I want to share a little bit of this. You guys had this beautiful video of Rosa's first calf that I'm going to bring up for everybody now. And you guys can get a sense uh, with us about just how incredibly cute uh, these animals are. So this is a, a bit of a 
illustration of the team behind <laughs> helping bring a baby Sumatran rhino into the world. They're such special animals. I love how furry they are too, which you don't really expect with the rhinos. I think most of us don't, <laughs> I've never seen anything this quite like that. This is why she wasn't losing weight. Oh, there we go. Uh, fantastic. Rudy, I, I want to ask a question before we dive in with our live classes. We've got our classes live with us. We've got quite a few on YouTube as well. This ecosystem, you got a chance to show this beautiful forest, you guys going down this incredible river. Um, to my understanding, the Lucer ecosystem isn't just a home for rhinos. There are some other really amazing species that live there too. Can you tell us a little bit about what else uh, lives in this, this amazing place? Oh yeah, right. Uh, Lucer is not only rhino. We have the Sumatran elephant, orangutans, and tiger as well. So four these species yeah. Walking together in the Lyocell ecosystem. So only one place in the earth yep. where these four species coexist in one location. So there is no other place in the world we can find these four species. And we also have uh, around 320 species of bird and uh, thousands um, another species here. So it's really beautiful and then uh, highest biodiversity in the world. So <laughs> and easy to find the, the bird in Lucer, easy to find the orangutan, even tigers <laughs> and elephants. So our team is every every day follow the orangutan and then follow the, the growth of the elephant. And uh, I think it's more than 10,000 of the picture of the uh, uh, what life in in our forest? So in in our database, we yeah. have the we have the collect collect collection of the maybe ten thousand of the picture of the what life from the user. Rudy, you have the best the best job in the world. I mean, really, I, I want to stress for our students. So we get the chance. We've had broadcasts from 95 countries now around the world. And we, we sometimes ask our explorers, what is your favorite place to go? Where's your favorite place to visit? And almost every single person, if they have to narrow it down on planet Earth, they pick Indonesia because it's such a special place. There is so much wildlife there. It's such a unique uh, treasure trove of biodiversity. And even by that standard in this incredible country, Lucer is, as Rudy said, the only place on earth where you get orangutans, tigers, elephants, and rhinos. Uh, and so, uh, again, what an incredible spot on, on planet Earth. Thank you for, for sharing all that. Rudy, we've got a lot of students today that you know might be interested in biodiversity, might be interested in future careers in science and conservation. I'm curious, how did you get started? How did you end up doing this for your living? Um, so I'm living close to the Lucer area and we have a very nice river, clean river in that time. So every day, I'm, we are as a kid swimming in, in the river. And this is like a two hours 
And so when I was a student, I know this is really good because our forest in Lucerne ecosystem still maintained very well. So that's why I love with the nature. And then I talk in that time, I want to walk uh, for the conservation is in the Lucerne. And Lucerne is really beautiful. I love in the morning, uh, see the beautiful of mountain in Lucerne. And I love that. So um, after my study in university, I'm lucky because uh, there is the um, institution uh, yeah. built by the Indonesian government and then uh, uni, European Union working together to, dip, to save the user. And I'm lucky because I'm recruited for staff, uh, for their staff and focus for the smarter rhino. So hmm. I think I'm the most lucky person in the world because I can touch the rhino. <laughs> I, I think you might just be. But I, I, I love this. And this is something that we hear from conservationists around the globe. It often starts with this local interest. People either grow up close to an area or they get the chance to visit an area early in their lives and they recognize and see how special it is. And so I think that that's a nice message generally is we have students, again, in North Carolina today. We've got groups in New Jersey, Ontario, uh, Missouri. If there's a place that you love now, maybe it's a local state or provincial park, a national park, maybe it's a city park that's close by, you can see the wildlife that's there. And if you want to help protect those species, there are lots of ways that you can get the education necessary to do that. And so I, I absolutely adore that story, Rudy. Um, I want to head to Ms. Sean Wise's class, joining us in Hammer, Ontario, uh, five sixes in St. Anne's School. If you guys want to come on in and, and unmute your mic, you can ask a question and uh, take us away. Hi, guys. Hi. Hello. Do you want to come on up? Hi, Jonah. Okay. Um, why why are they hunted so much? Yeah. So Rudy, why are people hunting the rhinos? Why do people want to poach them? Oh, uh, the rhino, the, the the poaching hunt of the rhino for the horn because that's really very expensive, and they said they said this is for the medicine, but no, this is only mites. This is not true. The the horn of the rhino. Same with our our nail. So, but the the people believe that, and then kill the so many rhino, and they said for the medicines. That only, and then this is very sad. How why we kill the animal? This is beautiful animal, only for the and and through the for the medicine. We can find the easy for the medicine every. Enemies in the world has the specific medicine. We don't need to kill the animal for the medicines. Because right now with the technology, we can find, we can uh, uh, have the solution for the, our health. Our health is not about the medicine, I think. This is about the different of the how we can maintain our body uh, healthy, our mind. This is the important thing. Uh, when we have a fresh our brain, and we will have the very strong of our body or good health, health good healthy. So don't believe the uh, from the animal will will save you from the enemy or or other. We, we've seen this with sharks too, and, and shark fin soup supposed to have certain properties, pangolins and their scales. A lot of animals around the world are hunted for these this perceived benefit. Uh, medicinally, that just simply doesn't exist, especially with rhino, as you said, it's your, it's your fingernails, it's your hair, it's keratin, it's not even, it's, it's nothing. <laughs> and so uh, one of the things that's been really nice to see over the last few years is that uh, increasingly, countries like Indonesia, Costa Rica, Rwanda have started really instituting ways that people can come and pay to see these animals alive. And so one of the, the nice things with ecotourism is that you end up in a situation where people value the animals much more alive than dead 
and you end up with people dedicated to protecting them, like Rudy, like some of the communities he's worked with. And I think that goes a really long way to helping ensure that future with, with thousands of rhinos, like you so optimistically said at the beginning. Um, Miss Brandon's class joining us in Lawson, Missouri. Welcome back, guys. Do you want to unmute your mic and come on in? You're good to go. Hey, guys. Hi. The whole football team's here. It's very exciting. Unmute. <laughs> then we can hear you. Yeah. Well, you're still muted. I really want to hear from you, but you got to press the microphone symbol in StreamYard. There we go. Hey. <laughs> yes. Hi. What's going on? I still can't hear you. I don't know what's happening. We we talked with this Brandon a little bit ago. Can you hear me now? Yes, perfect. There we go. How much do the rhinos weigh when they're an adult? Yeah. How big are the rhinos, Rudy? Um, so the Sumatra rhino is really small. This is only one and a half meters uh, tall. And this is around uh, less than two meters long. So this is the smallest rhino in the world. It's not like an African rhino. It's very big of rhino there. Sumatra is really small. This is the character of the, uh, the animal or like in Sumatra. Um, they are smaller than another area in, in the world. Yeah. And how heavy do they get? How much do they weigh? It's around, uh, can be 600 kilograms until to okay. 800 kilograms. Yeah. Yeah. So but they're fairly small. Another, they're really... um, but another subspecies in, in Borneo, they are smaller yeah. than in Sumatra. It's only 300 kilograms to 400. Wow. Yeah. It's like a like cute a, little rhino. Yeah, I think like a, like a cow or like a buffalo. Yeah. Very cool. I, I love that you touched upon this thing that I, I, I always want to highlight for students. On islands, specifically, you get creatures that either get bigger or smaller in size quite regularly. So mammals like us tend to get a lot smaller. In fact, when we found a human species on Indonesia that used to exist called uh, the forest people or, or the hobbits as, as sometimes they've been called, uh, much smaller people, you end up with smaller elephants, smaller rhinos, whereas reptiles tend to get a lot bigger. So you get bigger snakes, you get bigger lizards. It's really quite fascinating how when things end up on islands, they evolve and change these really unique directions. Um, thank you to Chris, uh, International Rhino Foundation, uh, sharing a rhino chart in the chat bar for anyone who wants to highlight that. And I'll put that up on YouTube as well for everybody. So Rudy, I, I wanted to ask about re-releasing the rhinos. You, you had Rosa give birth to this calf. How long do you hope to have the calf before you release it into the wild? Is there a, a set plan for that or are you waiting? So, so the rhino, it's difficult to breed the rhino. So it's one baby can burn every four years wow. from the one, one male, one, uh, one female. Um, so uh, we had the planning to, to release the rhino, but after they have the enough of the pop, uh, individual. So we cannot release the rhino if only less than 15 individual. Okay. So might be, might be we need 50 or 60 years later yeah. for the releasing the rhino uh, back to the wild. But we try you now, we start you now, and we will success, I'm, I'm sure, because <laughs> still many forests in Sumatra or Indonesia in the world, this is good for rhino, but there's no rhino there. Yeah. And this is our hope. We will make them bring, uh, plan and then we'll release later. Rudy, I absolutely love the fact that you, you talk so casually and positively about things 60 years off. Like that's that's the plan. It's not a one year thing. It's not a, a short time scale. It's the recognition that this takes a lot of work. It's gonna take decades to do this properly and that you guys are putting in the time and effort and resources to making that happen. It's just such a, a special and unique thing in the conservation world. Again, for our students, 
It uh, does not happen very often that any organization is planning that far in advance and to have that level of foresight is a really, really special thing. Um, so thank you for that, I, now I know. Um, St. Anne's School, you guys did, oh, you're back. Uh, come on in if you have another question for us and we'll head to Miss Brandon's right after that. Take some from our YouTube friends as well if they have any. Hey, St. Anne. All right. How can people help around, uh, how can people, uh, how can, how can people help the Rhino? Yeah, great question. Yeah, with many things. Uh, you know, uh, everyone can, can, can say this, we need to protect the Rhino and their habitat. And this is good because we'll make a positive, uh, pressure to the to the stakeholder in the world you know, everyone in the world should be care for the environmental this is not only for rhino i mean but another species as well you can chat and you can driving uh, drawing and then publish in in the social media or in internet uh, if you love the rhino this is really good we will make a pressure publication good publication and another thing uh, if we if we publish the good thing of Rhino, and many people will support this, and also we have to care about uh, like rabies or the not consume the many unuseful food, because if we use if we eat the so many thing in the world, that mean the nature need to. Uh, the larger area to 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 prepare the food for the many people in the world. So and then another people will destroy the forest, destroy the habitat of the Sumatran rhino or another species. So we have to very carefully to consume our food, to reduce our consumption, and also we have to care about our our art. Rudy, one of the things that we like to stress here at Exploring by the Seat of Your Pants that sort of underpins everything to do with conservation in the world, whether people are saving sharks or rhinos or birds, is don't waste. This is a, a sort of a difficult conception for a lot of North Americans because I'm Canadian and I grew up in a culture where you had something, you threw it away. You wanted to go to the store, you always took a car. You, I mean, you it's a throwaway culture and one in which we always took for granted the amount of stuff that we had and we never really thought to think of where it came from and, and how it was sourced. And I think increasingly kids like our audience today, you guys know this stuff, you're vested, you're excited to help take action. And so choose sustainable products is one of the easiest ways, whether it's paper products, um, if you're going to take a lunch to school, pack a litterless lunch. Those things really do go a long way to helping protect ecosystems and wild animals. And one thing that I, I absolutely, I, I you didn't mention, and I, I find it really important to share with kids, not only should you be excited about wild animal interactions, if you get the chance to visit somewhere like the Looser Ecosystem, fantastic. When you're sharing pictures, which I, I, a lot of you do, share pictures of positive interactions with animals and positive conservation places. So if you see a picture of someone riding a rhino, that's not something that happens in the wild. It's not a natural thing that's going to happen. And so sharing those pictures makes people more likely to want to do those behaviors because they think that it's an incentive to do so. And so our friends in Costa Rica like to note that if you share pictures where people are distant from animals, respecting their space, where people don't interact with them on a day-by-day -day basis, except for trained professionals like Rudy, that really does help a lot. So share good pictures and not sort of negative pictures of wildlife interactions. Great question, guys. I'm going to take a, a quick one from our, our chat and just share it uh, very uh, speedily. They wanted to know if rhinos were related to um, uh, sort of sorry, rhinos related to hippos in some way. So no, rhinos are in a group uh, called the odd toed ungulates with tapers, which are really cool animals, and horses. Those are the closest relatives of our rhinos. Hippos are more related to whales, actually. Interestingly enough, um, let's head to uh, YouTube. We don't have any questions there right now. Uh, I'm going to head to Miss Brandon's class, Lawson, Missouri. We got a time for a few more questions, so come on back in. Hey guys. Oh yeah, get the audio on. <laughs> nope. 
you're muted. It's the other thing you pressed. <laughs> Okay. Oh, perfect. What is what is the average lifespan? Yeah, how long do they live, Rudy? Oh, um, the rhino not live um, in the long term like uh, like uh, uh, like the human. This is only around the thirty-five or forty, something like that. So short, and they only mm, four or five babies born from the one individual of male. So this is not not so long. Yeah, that's, I mean, it, it's interesting. Yesterday we had a lemur program talking about that they live about 20, 25 years. So I guess humankind's natural life expectancy before modern medicine, before all our, our better nutrition and all those good healthcare things we have was about 35, 40, something like that in the, in the natural state, uh, but still, a pretty short lifespan with very few babies to perpetuate the population. And I, I think, again, this is an important note for rhinos. They're not having 70 babies. They're having four in a lifetime. So it really, it really matters to when you have a birth to protect that offspring, to make sure it lives and, and grows up and has a healthy sort of lifespan. So I'm really glad we got that question. Um, YouTube classes, I know you are set to share questions. Please feel free. I'm a Simmons class if you want to share there. Rudy, I'm curious what it is like to talk with communities in the forest. So I know you've done this for many years now. You've won prizes for your work doing community conservation. When you're working with a community, what are you sharing with them? Are you trying to make sure that they're not going to hunt the rhinos? Are you trying to make sure that they leave space for the rhinos? What does that actually look like? Oh, I love it. Uh, talk to the communities because they are... Uh, they are important because if the flooding happened in in from the forest, if they destroy the forest, they will they will destroy their life because we are uh, uh, directly water from the forest flooding to to their village. Yeah. So I never talk about the wildlife to the local communities because. Uh, uh, some of them don't understand, but we, if we talk about the flooding, everyone will will care. Oh yeah, we have to save the nature, because uh, if no forest, there's been no water. And then say, many times I, I I sit down with them with the coffee and with uh, uh, another many times also sleep with the, their their home, even though it's really remote area. And I'm happy because they are, have the very fresh of water, very fresh of the air. Yeah. And there is no pollution there in the, com in the communities surrounding the forest. It's really nice. And I can swim in the river because this is really nice river, really nice. And this is free. <laughs> we, don't, we don't have to pay. Uh -huh. And they are very healthy. Uh, living there. So that's why in our concept, we never talk about the animal. We can talk to, uh, about the animal to the to the student in the school because uh, they they float if we can they can see the um, orangutan yeah. or another um, another species. So, <laughs> no, I love this because you, you put it in terms that people sort of are vested in. And again, here in North America, when we think of water, we think of a tap. You go, you turn on the tap, unlimited free water comes out of the tap. But for most of the world, uh, and even for us as well, it's just sort of distant from our minds, water comes from habitats. And so we've heard this from people in, in Asia, in Africa, in South America, all around the globe. If you get rid of that habitat, if you destroy the forest, you lose the water. And so people's livelihoods are disrupted in so many ways when that happens. And so it ends up being a win-win. And I think this is something that conservationists around the globe are doing in such a positive way now, is realizing that what benefits animals benefits people as well. We are part of the natural world as well. And so everybody and everything wins from taking care of these ecosystems. And so that's a, <laughs> a beautiful message. And lucky you for getting to have coffee and swim in the nice river. What a great uh, job that is. Uh, we've got two questions from Miss Simmons class on YouTube, and then we'll wrap up from there. Time flies and you're having fun. 
Uh, Alex wants to know, is there a cost to maintain the habitat? So the area where you're raising the rhinos, how much does that cost to continue going? Oh, um, so we need the, uh, we don't have like a one team of the, our ranger. This is five rangers uh, walking in the forest for the 15 days minimum. Um, this is hard work, but they always happy. So this is around the 25 or 30,000 US dollar per year for the one team. Uh, so this is so, so we have we have the almost 40 teams now. Yep. So uh, the big money, but we're lucky because right now many the rich person in the world support us. Uh, they are donors, they are the rich person, or they are the companies because they know they care to, about the nature. No, they care about the, our forest. And um, like an international rhino foundation, this is one very important donor for us. So every year they they support us for around the two hundred thousand US dollar. Um, and we can maintain our team because their support. And also, some of the the, the student, even the student in 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 US or in uh, Europe in another country, support us something like uh, two dollars, three dollars. But if we uh, uh, um, mix with I don't know, donation, this is also uh, big for us and. We can use that for the conservations. So thanks, <laughs> thanks for everyone who support the uh, Honestly, conservation in in our planet. I, I absolutely, I think this is a really important message. And again, we love the opportunity to bring these programs for free to classes. But we do note that if you guys are ever keen to help support the organizations that Rudy works with, uh, International Rhino Foundation. I mean. Our, a small amount of money really does go a long way to some of these organizations. I think over our last seven years, Exploring by the Seat of Your Pants classrooms have raised $15,000 for conservation around the globe. And so we're always thrilled when classes take upon the mantle to do this. And as Rudy said, a team of rangers to patrol a forest is $30,000 US dollars a year, which sounds like a lot, is very, very little in the scheme of things if you think about the incalculable loss if you lose that forest, if you lose those orangutans, if you lose those rhinos, as we're talking about today for World Rhino Day. And so I, I think, uh, thank you for sharing all that. I think it's a really important message for our classes. And I will make sure you guys have links if you want to learn more about how you contribute to the work that Rudy's doing. Uh, so a final question, I think this is an important one, and I think a lot of students feel this way about conservation now in general. Robert wants to know, is there a danger to conservationists working there? Is there a danger to you doing the work that you do um, on a day-by-day -day basis? No, if danger, that means I, I already died, but I'm still alive in here. I'm, I'm very happy. Um, so... <laughs> <laughs> so that's good to know. I'm glad you're alive. For me, forest is safer than. <laughs> uh, so, forest for me, this is the safer than uh, in on the road because only few of the people die in the forest. There is this is very rare, but in the traffic. I think one day we lost maybe 10,000, I don't know, in the world. So in the forest, we're really not very nice place. We don't need to pay anything in the forest. We only carry out our, our food, our, our uh, clothes. And this is enough. We can fishing in the river. This is a nice river. We can swim there. So yeah, sometimes we 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 we're facing with the with the poacher, but this is not for the everyday. This is only like a few cases per year, not for the everyday. So forest is really beautiful. I love in the forest. 
We, if, if there's nothing else we take away from this session, we know how much you love the place that you get to live and work, Rudy. That is my favorite answer we've ever had to that question ever. If, if it was dangerous, I'd be dead already. Um, and, and for anyone who's had the chance to drive in places like Indonesia or Madagascar or uh, some other countries that we've had the chance to do broadcasts from, it is a, a, a jarring experience. And so I, I, again, you're a special guy, Rudy. I, I love your outlook. I love your positivity and optimism for the work that you're doing. You're doing such amazing uh, stuff to help protect this ecosystem, these incredible animals. And I, I just want to say again, for all our folks joining us live and on YouTube, it's World Rhino Day today. If you want to share this broadcast, hashtag World Rhino Day. If you want to check out the work of the International Rhino Foundation, check out rhinos.org or catch them on social media at rhinos IRF. Uh, lots of ways to keep the learning going. And Rudy, what we do to end every broadcast, I just want to bring in our classes to say a big thank you and farewell. YouTubers, you can clap along as well, but St. Anne grade five sixes and Miss Brandon's class, thank you both so much. Yeah. And have a wonderful day, everybody. Bye for now, guys. Thank you so much for joining. Thanks, Rudy. <laughs>